decide which is more important. I mean, I don't think you can... You know, there was a guy named Steve Hill who became uh, sort of uh, Baal Teshuva. He lived in Muncie. Yes, he eventually lived in Muncie, but he was on, I think, Law and Order. But when he first started acting, he had no Yiddishkeit at all. He had no religious background. And at some point, I remember meeting him and his then wife, Selma, and he just, something happened and he became literally very strict and very observant. His children also. Yeah. But he was lucky because he had a job on Law & Order. We only had to work one day a week. Uh, and they worked around it and he lived up in Muncie. Um, I think it's a, it's a challenge. It can be done. I wouldn't say it can be it can be done. I would say one would have to make enormous compromises uh, in the in the show business in the show business of theater or film or television or whatever. They don't get that. They don't understand what that means. I mean, if I would say to them, you know, the scene that you're planning for Friday night, I can't do it. I have to be sure. They look at me and go, oh, really, really. So, how old were you the first time you put a quarter in on Shabbat and started sobbing? Well, I graduated college. I was just 20, not yet 20. Uh, probably 22. 22. I still cry about things like that. I, I. You know, when I hear Shlomo Kalbach singing Pishuli Sharei Tzedek, you know, when I hear the sound of that, the music of that, it freaks me out. It is, for me, it is the greatest sound in the world. It's like, you know, it's like Beethoven or Mozart, for me. You know, it's the sound that comforts me the most. So, I haven't lost that. I mean, I just reinvented it for myself. But, but, you know, Orthodox Jews wouldn't approve of that. But it's me, it's my life, it's my music, it's my inner world, it's my... Jews tend to... I, I was raised a Protestant, and so Seventh-day Adventist, and so Protestants are much more repressed. You know, they're very nice people, um, while Jews are much more expressive of their emotions. Um, I'm wondering, do you think in some ways, coming from a Jewish background, that was an advantage in, in being an actor? Because it is okay in, in Jewish life to be, to be emotional. Listen, for my bar mitzvah, I said shachris, I lamed the whole sedra, I did the haftorah, I made a speech, and I daven musaf. So, I was the star of that, that particular Shabbos. I was already an actor, you know. I, there was nobody who was going to take that away from me. I could still do this, this I could still do this whole sedra of Noah, by heart. And I'm 69, and that's how many years ago. Hey, let all those Noah, Noah, he Remember the Haftarah? Rani Akara. Rani Akara. We all love that. But that's it. That's that's the tie. That's the thing. The fact that I know that and he knows that. It's the bond. It's the silent. We have a bond. Jews have a bond. You know. It's just. Whether you're, you know, secular, religious, or it's, there's a secret we have that we understand that nobody can take away from us. It doesn't make us better, although some Jews think it does make them better. It's just, we are who we are. My wife, who, who came from a... Um, you know, sort of her parents were commies. There was, uh, being Jewish, man, you went to Shul and Yom Kippur. She didn't know what kosher was. Suddenly to have to have a kosher house, she had no idea what that was. But she can sing now. 
you know, she can sing Yiddish songs and she knows all of Shlomo Kalbach. She, she knows all of that and it makes her so happy only because she sees how happy it makes me. Music does that. It's interesting, you've talked about sounds of music and uh, the uh, uh, olfactory sense, you know, thinking about the Pacific and so on. Right. You incorporate that into your, uh, into your acting uh, at times? Well, I think actors, by just by definition, uh, do that. I remember um, there was a series called The Trials of Rosie O'Neill with Sharon Glass, and uh, it was on for two years or three years, and I played her boss. And it was the first time ever on primetime television there was a guy with a yarmulke, a Shoma Shabbos character. And Barney Rosenzweig created it. And when he cast me in the part, he had no idea that I had this background. So it was a, you know, it was a trip for me, and it was a trip. So usually guys with yarmulkes on television were sort of nebbishy and didn't dress well and was sort of stereotypically whatever. And I, actually, the yarmulke I have was from a fan. I got yarmulkes every week. Ben Meyer was the name of my character, I just realized that. And I would get these kipot from all over the country from people who watch the show. And one week, the character of Sharon Glass came to my house, to, this, to Ben Meyer's house, for Friday night dinner. So they wrote in the thing that Ben Myers says the prayer for, you know, Friday night meal. So I went into the producer, I said, guys, if you want me to say, it's called Kiddush, if you want me to say Kiddush, we have to do Kiddush. Because if I don't do a real Kiddush, I ain't doing it. I said, it's too personal to me. It's too and there I was on Friday night on television with a kippah saying the whole Kiddush. And that made me feel so incredible, I can't tell you. Uh, and, and in New York, I live in New York and I'm on the subway all the time. And people do recognize me and they're very respectful. But when somebody comes up to me and says to me, you make us very proud. It really affects me because I know they're Jews. And I know what they're saying, you know, I know just what they're saying. They're saying, you make us, we Jews, proud. And that's, you know, for a kid from Williamsburg to... Uh, Arthur Miller's last play was a play called Broken Glass, and it was about a Kristallnacht in Germany. It was about Jews who were living in Brooklyn, and that's what that play was about. And for me to do an Ar Arthur Miller's last play, to star in Arthur Miller's last play, and play that character, Coming, I and mean, he lived in Williamsburg. Coming from, it was, you know, it's a trip. I love, I love being an actor who's Jewish who plays Jews, and gives that character dignity and respect. Anyway. Did you ever come into contact with any anti-Semitism? Not really. You know, we, the people in show business, are very open. They're not. We're not really prejudiced at all, uh, for the most part. And I think people who become actors or writers or dancers or musicians uh, are very respectful of people's schools. I don't think I have. The same as well as directors, producers. I've never run into it. I notice often, I've always wanted to ask this question, I notice often that when Judaism is done on TV, it's often done poorly, especially with rituals. Things will be wrong or off or... So when I saw your episode and when you were lighting the, the Hanukkah candles, I heard your Ashkenazic accent uh, sitting with my fiance and we said, ah, here's somebody who, this is somebody who must also be Jewish, you know. Um, you lit the candles the right way. I mean, everything went, I, so I, I always wonder, it's not like there's a lack of Jews in Hollywood for people to ask questions to about what gets on and what The question about anti-Semitism is related to that. I think there are Jews in the business who are a little embarrassed to be Jews or who think they should be a certain kind of Jew and uh, think that if they